During the Cold War, three Soviet cosmonauts would make history by becoming the first humans to live aboard a space station. But their triumph would end in silence, a deadly silence that no one on Earth could hear. When their capsule returned to the ground, it appeared to have landed normally, but when the hatch was opened, they were met with a chilling scene. All three men were dead. In this episode, we'll discover what happened, why it happened, and what was done to prevent it from occurring again. This is the story of the only humans ever to die in space, the Soviet Union's Soyuz 11 mission. The 29th of June 1971, Kazakhstan, the USSR. Over the last few years, after being beaten to the moon by NASA, the Soviet space program has set its sights on a different frontier, orbital living. In 1971, in the weeks prior to the 29th of June, the USSR has launched a manned mission to board Salyut 1, the world's first space station. It wasn't about just going to space anymore, it was about staying there. The mission to board the station is Soyuz 11. Its goal is ambitious, dock with the station, live and work aboard it for a period of three weeks to prove that long-term human spaceflight is possible. They will then reboard the Soyuz capsule and re-enter Earth's atmosphere and safely parachute to Earth. Several months earlier, the first mission to the Salyut, Soyuz 10, had failed to successfully dock with the station and had returned home. The Soyuz 7K OKS spacecraft was launched on the 6th of June 1971 from the Kazakh Soviet Socialist Republic. It is a crewed spacecraft made to dock with the space station that is launched into low Earth orbit by rocket. Originally, a different crew was assigned to the mission, which would have included Alexei Leonov, the first man ever to conduct a spacewalk, but just days before launch, a routine medical exam revealed what they thought to be signs of tuberculosis in one of the other cosmonauts. The entire crew were grounded. Their backups, Georgi Dobrovolsky, Vladislav Volkov and Viktor Patsayev, were rushed in to take their place. Though well trained, this will be Dobrovolsky and Patsayev's first mission into space. Having launched on the 6th of June, Soyuz 11 marked a major milestone, the first successful crewed docking with a space station. Over the next 23 days, the crew conducted scientific experiments, Earth observations, and even broadcasted TV segments back home. Now, on the 29th of June, the crew members put on their entry suits and take their seats inside the descent module, a bell-shaped container which is pressurised with breathable air for the men inside. It is the only section of the vehicle which returns to Earth at the end of the mission. Soyuz undocks from the station and the module containing the crewmen separates, beginning its re-entry during which it slows down from hypersonic speed and reaches extremely high temperatures. But a problem suddenly arises, pressure in the vessel drops, Patsayev attempts to fix it, but his suit makes it difficult to move. Back outside, the module continues its descent, and the parachute opens, allowing it to float slowly to the ground. Waiting to meet them are a recovery team. Outwardly, there is no damage whatsoever to the capsule, they knock on the side, but there is no response from within. When they open the capsule, they find all three men inside dead. The cause of death for the cosmonauts is quickly determined to be asphyxiation due to a loss of cabin pressure, caused by a fault in a valve located between the orbital and descent modules of the Soyuz 11 spacecraft. When the descent module separated from the service module, 12 minutes after retrofire, the explosive bolts designed to separate the two modules fired simultaneously instead of in sequence, which created a shock. This shock caused a small internal mechanism of the pressure equalisation valve to loosen, triggering it to open unexpectedly. The valve, which normally adjusted the cabin pressure automatically, began to let air escape at an altitude of 104 miles while they were still in space. The result was disastrous, the cabin rapidly depressurised and all of the air was lost in less than a minute. The crew, unprotected by pressure suits or space helmets, were directly exposed to the vacuum of space. 
Victor Patsayev, one of the cosmonauts, was found near the valve, leading to the conclusion that he might have tried to block or close it before he lost consciousness, but in his bulky re-entry suit, reaching and manipulating the valve would be immensely difficult. Flight data from the biomedical sensors worn by one of the crew showed that cardiac arrest occurred within 40 seconds of the pressure loss. Within 15 minutes, the capsule's pressure was zero, and the crew had long since perished. While the crew could have stayed conscious for up to 40 seconds after the decompression, they were unable to act due to the effects of oxygen starvation. Within 20 seconds, the lack of oxygen would have rendered them unconscious. Before the Soyuz 11 mission, Alexei Leonov, who was originally supposed to command the flight, had advised the crew to manually close the valves between the orbital and descent modules. Leonov, who had spent extensive time in Soyuz simulators, didn't trust the valves to shut automatically. However, it seems the crew didn't follow this advice. After the tragedy, Leonov himself tested the valves and found that closing them manually took almost a minute, far too long to act in an emergency where the cabin's atmosphere was rapidly escaping. In the wake of the mission's failure, Soviet state media works hard to downplay the tragic end, instead focusing on the crew's achievements during their time aboard Salyut 1. For nearly two years, the Soviet Union keeps the exact cause a secret. This left NASA planners deeply concerned about the future of their programs, as they feared prolonged exposure to microgravity could be fatal. But NASA's Dr. Charles Berry is adamant that the cosmonauts' deaths could not have been caused by weightlessness. Dr. Berry even speculates that inhalation of toxic substances might have been the cause. A declassified film later showed ground crews attempting CPR on the cosmonauts. At that point, they hadn't yet realised that the cause of death was a depressurised cabin. Audio contact with the crew was lost before re-entry began, and the recovery teams were already preparing for a worst-case scenario. The cosmonauts are given an official state funeral, with their bodies laid to rest in Red Square, Moscow, near the resting place of Yuri Gagarin, the first person in space. Posthumously, they are each awarded the Hero of the Soviet Union medal. Soyuz 11 remains, to this day, the only incident where humans have died in space itself, rather than during liftoff or landing. The silence of that tragedy would echo across the world, a painful lesson of the dangers of pushing the boundaries of exploration. Thanks for watching this mini YouTube documentary. If you enjoyed it, give it a like for the time and effort it took me to make, and subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes, and I'll see you next time.